Hello. Hi, is this Laura? Yes. All right, well, let me do the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, we're very excited to welcome tonight's featured guest. You will remember her as the devious but beautiful Angelique from the original series Dark Shadows. And she's here tonight to talk about the first all-new Dark Shadows novel in years, Dark Shadows Wolf Moon Rising. We are very excited to welcome Miss Laura Parker. You're on the air live with Terry and Tiffany. Welcome. Hi. Thanks for having me. Wow, I'm so happy to have you back. I want to find out, first of all, I know that you had posted, I believe, on your blog that recently you had visited John Carlin. How's he doing? Well, he's recuperating. He seems to be fine. He's in great spirits. Uh, He is in rehab. He's having a little trouble walking, Mm. but they're working on that with him. And uh, he looks great. He's lost a lot of weight. You know, he's still got that curmudgeon personality complaining <laughs> about everything <laughs> but i think he's going to be moving to a private home with a with a, a caregiver mm-hmm. and he told me when i left that you know that 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 absolutely he wants to come to the convention next year in new york so that's his goal now to to be well and and walking and show up at the convention wow you know we were so lucky to have jonathan frid come back to the conventions just before the end i know i know God, I miss I him. Know. He finally changed his mind and decided he'd come to see all those adoring fans. <laughs> <laughs> he stayed away too long. <laughs> Absolutely. So how are you doing, my dear? Well, I'm just fine. I, I have the, the launch of my book. Um, it's going to be Tuesday night at the at the Grove, Barnes & Noble at the Grove in Los Angeles. And and uh, I'm very excited. I'm just hoping somebody, some people come. Because I've waited a long time. I turned this book in over a year and a half ago, and mm-hmm. I, it's just incomprehensible to me. Publishers take such a long time, yes. but um, it's finally coming out, and it's uh, it's a real treat for the fans. It's got four different storylines, and all of them um, are based on some character on the show. And the main one is, of course, Quentin. Mm-hmm. And I haven't written about Quentin before, so that was he was a wonderful character to write about. And um, as you probably know, if you know Dark Shadows, he's uh, he lives under he's he's enchanted. He lives under a spell, and the spell is maintained by a painting that keeps him young, mm-hmm. and uh, he therefore he never ages. He's over almost a hundred years old when he's walking around on the show, and like the picture of Dorian Gray, mm-hmm. it it absorbs all the. Um, all the evil in his life, all, all of his drinking and his drugs and his womanizing, so that the painting ages and becomes very ugly. But Quentin remains handsome and young. And you know something? Somehow this painting is lost. Wow. And he's very upset about losing the painting because he, now he thinks he, if it's being destroyed or if, it's, if it is destroyed, he'll start aging. And the painting also absorbs the werewolf curse. Mm-hmm. So the main problem is he's aware, he's he's... He knows that he might turn into a werewolf on the full moon. So he's terrified. He has to find this painting. And, you know, I actually think David Selby has one of those paintings <laughs> in, in his attic. Because he looks really good. He's very I, good. And I know he's beautiful, isn't he? He's such a handsome man. Wow. You know, yeah. I, I've got to ask. I think you're, you're in a great position. I know you write different storylines and, and center on different characters. But I would always have thought that as an actress or, or with an actor, if they wrote a book, to where maybe when you're you're doing your role back in the sixties and seventies, you're working for Dan Curtis, you you always got good juicy days. You got days when you weren't doing so much. But now that you're in control and you're <laughs> writing the story, yeah, do you think about that? Um, I'll tell you what I think. Uh, the The first book was, you know, I, I had never written a book, so it was sort of an amateur outpouring of passion, and it was my character. I told her story. Mm-hmm. Angelique Suset. I told the story of her childhood and how Barnabas Collins seduced her and abandoned her and their whole love affair and then the curse when she turned him into a vampire. So I thought, well, if I keep writing, I want these books to become bestsellers and I want to, you know, I don't want to just make them for the fans. I want them to be for the entire book reading population. And I started out with uh, sort of uh, highfalutin ideas. But on this book, I've uh, I've realized that um, the fans are they're sort of my base. 
and mm-hmm. they're the ones that enable me and they're the ones that are loyal to me. So as far as being in control, as you say, yes, I guess I'm in control, but I'm also, I also feel a very strong responsibility to the show. You know, fans watch um, all, how many are there, 1,225 episodes. Yeah. They buy the entire box of DVDs. They start at the beginning and they what? They talk back and forth, back and forth. They watch all the way to the end, and then they start over. <laughs> and so you know, I think that I have a responsibility to continue these stories mm-hmm. in the same tone, the same mood, with the same characters, but at the same time, new stories with new characters. So right. I'm I'm kind of doing a blend of the two, but I want to move the you know the great Dark Shadows saga forward in you know in mysterious and scary and fascinating ways just as the show was but i also want to stay stay true to the mood and the tone and a little different from what tim burton did you know i want to make it i want i want the fans to be able to read these books and feel like they're watching dark shadows again how can I thank you? I mean, seriously, you're, you're bringing a tear to my eye just hearing this because this is what I want from you. And it was <laughs> like I turned around and posted about you and somebody suggested some other Dark Shadows novels written by other people. And I was like, well, that's fine if you want to read everything, but who is more qualified than you? <laughs> I mean, how many years were you on that show? I mean, seriously, you are so qualified to do this. When, when you were in the show back in the 60s and 70s, did you used to read, what was it, I believe the Marilyn Ross paperbacks? No, I never read them. Uh-huh. Really? No. Did you? Yeah, I got them all. <laughs> <laughs> Are they good? Well, not as good as yours. <laughs> not as good as yours. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah. No, I was. You know, I wasn't really interested. I never dreamed I'd be writing a novel. For sure. You know, I'm not presumptuous enough to think that. Oh yes, you know, I'm a writer and an actress. It's hard work. It is. And I've worked. I've worked very, very hard to just try to get a grip on the craft and. Mm-hmm. You know, I went to graduate school. I got an MFA in creative writing because I thought, you know, I I need to learn techniques. I need I need uh, tools, mm-hmm. and I need hints on how this is done. And I need to learn how to read a novel, a well written novel, with an eye to how it's written and not just mm-hmm. to what's happening. Right. And so it was. It's been it's been wonderful. I'm so fortunate. I mean, I'm so fortunate to actually be cast on the show and I'm very fortunate to be doing these books well this is not your first now you wrote Angelique's Descent was that the only two that you did or no the second one Angelique's Descent was the story of my character it started when she was a little girl in Martinique mm-hmm. in the Caribbean and uh, the adventure she had how she learned to be a witch how she became a witch how she uh, apprenticed with a voodoo priest and she learned voodoo in Haiti mm-hmm. I made all that up, so, you know. <laughs> and then I told the story of, of as I said, her, you know, Barnabas seduced her. She was a lady's maid. She was Josette's maid. And uh, he became enamored and he seduced her. But then he just abandoned her for Josette, who was younger and prettier and richer, and broke her heart. Yes, he was so, a gigolo. He was a gigolo for sure. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but, you know, I made him kind of a gigolo. You yeah. know, he, when you write, you write the interior thought of the characters, too. So, yeah, I made him kind of cold-hearted and mean and kind of deserving of his fate because when she turned him into a vampire, that kind of ruined his life. You know, I'm really I'm really surprised that uh, Mrs. Stoddard didn't force uh, Barnabas into going more with Angelique because that really could have helped out the family fortune even more <laughs> so. <you know? laughs> oh, no, they thought that she, she was a servant girl. She was beneath them all. They were... You know, they were the highfalutin Collinses with the big house on yeah. the hill. Well, that's all the what, money. That's what my daughter said. I said, you know, Jonathan's a great man, and, and he's different in character and smarter than Barnabas because Barnabas should have went with Angelique, and why not? And my daughter was like, well, she was <laughs> she a was servant a girl. And I was like, well, hoity toity, he's all like, he's <laughs> all like, well, evil. She was a yeah. witch, you know. I was thinking some might so look. that was just butter wouldn't melt in her mouth. Right. Sweet, sweet, lovely girl. So then the second book is called The Salem Branch. And what's interesting is that I. I played for one day the role of Miranda Duval in during the Salem Witch Trials. They did a whole section on the Salem Witch Trials. And I thought, why not write a book about her? So I thought it would be interesting. You know, everyone knows that the Salem Witch Trials were immoral, that mm-hmm. those 
you know, those women were not witches right. that were hung. And I thought, oh, how fascinating it would be if one of them was really a witch, and that would be my character. So I researched, and it's so much fun, I researched the Salem witch trials and read all the, you know, the courtroom proceedings and what the judges had to say and, and what they, you know, what they wrote about witchcraft. I thoroughly believed that the devil was living there among them. It was not questioned. So it was just really fun to write about that. And I also carried the story forward in in real time. Barnabas was cured. He was a human, struggling with being human, you know, not liking being weak and not having his powers. <laughs> so that's what I did in the Salem branch. And now in uh, this one, the one that's coming out on Tuesday, I, I, he's a vampire again. Fantastic. You know, I love the way you're promoting this. I don't know, was this the idea of your publicist, or, or was this your idea in what you call your blog tour, and you're inviting bloggers and everything to take part and actually help you promote this book? Tell us about that. Oh, well, that's something that writers do now. They, you know, they, they go on. It's set up by the publishing company, by Tor, and uh, I have my own blog, and then I also blog a lot on Facebook, I must say. <laughs> but then there's there's also um, a series of, of blog sites that I'm invited to go on. I have actually four or five of them lined up, and I'm just you know I'm just posting some of my thoughts or ideas about writing or about. I think the next one I do is going to be called uh, Dark Shadows or Depth Shadows, and comparison of the movie and the TV show and. Because there's a long, strong line down the middle of the fans. You know, uh -huh. there are those who, who thought the movie was fun, and then there are those who hated it so much that if you say anything good about it, they 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 won't speak to you. You, you want you want to know something? We were lucky to get Jim on as a guest. Uh, the first uh, actually appearance anywhere. Uh, this is when the trailer had first came out. Uh -huh. We we had so many listeners. We we <laughs> sold out our listening slots. I mean, seriously, there was so many people that yeah, there there definitely was a big controversy. Were you surprised? A very strong opinion. I was surprised. Yeah, because I thought this is great. I mean, this is bringing bringing dark shadows back. It's you know, and it, it definitely helped me out. They re they re published my first two books. They you know let me write another one. Um, uh, People were talking about Dark Shadows again, and uh, of course the fans—they just think they think that it should be just exactly the way it was. You know, they don't want to see it changed. They don't want to see Barnabas campy and silly and spooky. You know, they want—they want that that sort of veneer of of Jane Austen, you know, uh, elegance and and. Uh, I don't know. I mean, they they wanted to be serious, and and we when we were acting on the show, we played it very seriously. You know, we didn't make fun of it. We didn't uh, wink at the audience and say, "This is really, this is really campy, isn't it?" Mm -hmm. No, no, we played it. You know, we acted it as though we were acting real life, and uh, we were encouraged to do that by our directors. Well, can I can I say this? I just want to say this. I'm not really going to give too much of an opinion about it. I was really, I was so happy that you guys were included, uh, you know, yeah. and, but I'm really kind of, if I can just say a, a naughty word, I'm really kind of pissed off and didn't give you guys more to do. Oh, I know. We were very, I actually cried when I got in the, in the limousine to go back home. <laughs> it's kind of like, is that all there is? <laughs> yeah. Because we, it was just so hyped in our minds, you know, we were flown first class, it's insane, all the way to... London, and then we put up in this incredible hotel that was this old castle with a moat, and and then we, you know, and and makeup and hair and everybody catering to us. Then we got on set and we just walked in the door and it was it. Wow. <laughs> I know we were sad. We were sad because we were all primed and ready to improvise if we had to, and you know, play our roles if we had to. And we asked Tim Burton, you know, who are we? You know, are we? Older versions of ourselves, he said. No, you just guessed at the party. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it was. It was a. It, it, we were disappointed. I'll have to admit, but at the same time, it was. It was really a great experience right. because it was wonderful meeting 
that wonderful group of actors uh, who were all so friendly and so warm. I mean, Helen the Bottom Carter, she just said, you know, we're watching the DVDs in the makeup room and we're all hooked. <laughs> <laughs> and... and um, well, if I could ask you just one question, I'll move on to your, your books. Uh, as it was, because this is something that we've been contemplating on, on call radio here for a long time. As it was a masquerade party scene, now I had heard a rumor that Jonathan never got a script. And, of course, he did look Johnny Depp up and down and saw the way that he looked with the white makeup and everything. Was he really aware that that's the way he looked through the whole film, or did he think that he was dressed up for the costume party? You know, I don't think he was too aware I think uh, I think he was kind of fading. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was trying. He was doing his best, right. but he wasn't. He first of all, he wasn't really happy being there. He wanted to go home. He wanted to go back to Canada. And then when they brought him up on this, out on the set, you know, he's a professional. He's an actor, and he he rose to the occasion. And of course, he knew that Johnny Depp was playing Barnabas. Mm-hmm. Is that your question? Yeah, I knew he knew that Johnny Depp uh, was playing Barnabas, but I had heard that he didn't get a chance to read the script because it was done so quickly. And, and I, I was just concerned, like, when he died was when the trailer come out, and, you know, and then your mind goes wild with imagination. I was just wondering if, if he was really that upset that it might have had something to do with his Oh, life. no, it didn't have anything to do with his dying, no. He, 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 he met... Uh, Johnny Depp on the set and they looked at each other and they talked and they smiled and they shook hands and there was a passing of the torch in a way because I think that Johnny Depp was absolutely thrilled to meet Jonathan Frid. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. Yeah, he really was. He was giddy and, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and he... He was he was just so warm and so friendly and so was Tim Burton. I mean, and at at the... um, we we were asked over to the set the day we got there, and and uh, they had to stop filming. And uh, Tim Burton tur- looked at the crew. You know, here's eighty, ninety people standing there with nothing to do, and he said, "This is the original Dark Shadows cast." And oh, they all applauded and laughed, and it just made us feel wonderful. You know, it really it really did. It was a phenomenal experience. Well, that's Except good. Sets where you would not believe the sets. You oh, yeah, the, the sets. The sets were awesome. <laughs> yeah, they wow. were awesome. I mean, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just, if anything, I'm glad you guys had that last time together. I really am. Yeah, they, a lot, you know, a, a lot of the fans were unhappy with the fact that it was kind of a campy comic tone and that there were, you know, instead of scary moments, there were jokes. But, um,. That's what those two guys do. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what they do. If you look at that's all what they of it, do, yeah, that's what and they do. you know, when they took it on, you could not. I never believed it was going to look like Dark Shadows. You know, uh, I thought Eva Green was just staggering and just beautiful, but you know, she wasn't the same. She didn't play it the way I did. So. Right. Well, nobody could have the same eyes as Laura Parker has. <laughs> well, hello there. No, <laughs> thank you. That's very nice of you. So, in going in going back to the book and talking about uh, your new book, now I know you had mentioned that Quentin's in there and, and Barnabas is in there, but I was reading the press release. There's actually a couple of other characters from Dark Shadows that have storylines in there too, right? Yeah, um, you know, David is 16 now. Our little boy on the show, David, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. and. Um, so I thought, why not have a teenage love affair? I mean, Twilight was certainly a, <laughs> a success. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> so, um, you know, I thought, well, one has to be real and the other supernatural. So I had David fall in love with a girl named Jacqueline, who is uh, the reincarnation of Angelique. And... Uh, She's a very young girl. She's very troubled. She knows she has powers, but she doesn't know where they come from. Um, she's having, she's been diagnosed schizophrenic. She actually appears first of all in uh, the Salem branch. So I'm continuing these characters' lives, but these two find out the painting is missing, and so they get drawn back in time to the 20s and uh, looking for the painting. And so I have a whole section on the 1920s. When Elizabeth Collins, you know, who's the matriarch, Mm -hmm. not Elizabeth Collins, Elizabeth Stoddard, Stoddard, the Joan Bennett part, when she was 19 years old and a flapper, 
and running around with cropped hair and uh, oh no, that's fun! Wow, that's fun! <laughs> I never, I never thought of her that way. Yeah, yeah, and then you know they have the a big party like the Great Gatsby's house. The co- you know Collinwood is transformed into a beautiful, you know, strung with bright lights and flowers and food and dancing and music and. Uh, they have a raid. The police come in and raid them because it's, you know, prohibition. And then they Everclear, which is this um, kind of uh, alcohol they made back then, cheap alcohol, gets poured out on the lawn, and the lawn gets cut on fire, and then the mafia show up, and <laughs> then the Ku Klux Klan shows up. I just piled it all in. <laughs> wow. It's so just, a, you know, it's this whole wonderful section where the, the two kids are back in the 20s. And, of course, they're falling in love. David is besought, just absolutely out, out of his mind in love with her. So that's an interesting part. And yeah. then, of course, Angelique is still hanging around, so of course. making problems <laughs> for everyone. You know, it was because of Dark Shadows that I understand TV shows today, because <laughs> we've been watching shows and they're doing some parallel time, and my daughter yeah. is totally confused, <laughs> but I totally understand it all, because... <laughs> Right. You know what parallel time is? You know what back in time is? <laughs> you know what leaping forward in time is? So, you know what characters playing different characters, <laughs> actors playing different characters? Yeah, one of the best things about uh, Wolf Moon Rising is that Humbert Allen Estrato, who played Nicholas Blair, the were- were- the warlock, mm-hmm. war- warlock was, um, was one of the favorite characters. And so I've brought him back. It's his brother, Nathaniel Blair, and he's a scientist. He's interested in the occult. And he's come to Collinwood to search for the vampire that he's heard is hanging out there because he wants to trap him and perform an autopsy and see what goes on inside a vampire. Wow. See if it's any different. So he's a very, very evil snarly, conniving character. <laughs> so when, when And everybody you, will love that because they'll see Humbert, you know. Oh, he, are you kidding me? Him and Jerry Lacey, okay. Those two, let me tell you, the best. Aren't they great? Yeah, they but I, I want to know, when, when you write these, okay, having been there and done all the TV shows and you did uh, the movie and everything, do you see what you're writing in your mind? Does it play like a movie in your head? I mean, can you literally see it? Yes, that's, that's actually the way I write. I started writing screenplays and so my my actual writing craft developed visually. I see it. I see it, and I describe what I see. That's how I write. I yeah, don't. Yeah. You know I don't I, go off in any other tangents. I just see it play like the movie, and I see all the characters, and I remember so well. You know their their intonations, their costumes, their all their subtle reactions, the way they moved, the way they sounded, and. And, you know, how they reacted to situations. I became so familiar with all that mm-hmm. that I, you know, it's very easy for me to write Joan Bennett's part or Louis Edmonds' part, you know, Roger or, or Humbert, because I see them so clearly. Absolutely. Well, you know, I, let, let me ask you well, this. Wait, I, w- I want to okay. interject really quick. And this is kind of a little bit off topic, but not really. In talking about uh, people like Jerry Lacey and, and some of your other Dark Shadows co-stars, you actually appeared in a recent project with Jerry Lacey and Catherine Lee Scott both, right? And that was Dr. Mabuse? That's right. We did a, an independent movie that... Um, um, was uh, directed by Ansel Farage, and he is 21 years old. And uh, he talked us into being in this movie, and he's going to be, I think, a famous director. He's very, very uh, creative and intelligent and sensitive. And he wrote this spooky movie and cast us in it. And Catherine and I walk around in weird hats, <laughs> and black gloves and, and say things like, his time has come. <laughs> and we're sort of soothsayered, soothsayers. And um, maybe, actually, we've done two. He made one, and it's, he, uh, it's I think it's going to come out on DVD, and, I, and he just finished another one. So, uh, wow. Well, you and need it's, to been, a, it's been really fun, Catherine and Jerry and I. Jerry plays the Dr. Mabuse, the main character. Yeah. He's wonderful. His that face is just not to be believed. And, and Jerry's work uh, worked recently with with my director friend Fred Owen Ray, who you need to have Jerry introduce you to because Fred's like a major Dark Shadows fan, and Fred's made 
like I don't know, so many movies I can't count. He just makes movies all the time. Oh, really? Yes. Well, how can I meet this person? <laughs> well, you get a hold of Jerry Lacey and you say, oh, okay. introduce me to Fred Olin Ray, because we want to definitely Fred, see you more. Fred or, Olin Ray. Okay, because next- I do see Jerry fairly often. We have dinner together and... Uh, and uh, we we all you know I was with Catherine all day today. Really? Yeah. So what we, a, we all see each other. What does she think? Okay, there there was always a, a rivalry between your two characters. But I know you you ladies are good friends in good life in, in real life rather. What did she think when she found out you were going to write? Of course, what you do is different than her, but she puts out books too. What did she think? I mean, I'm, I'm sure she was very pleased. You know, we want the best for each other. Very good, very good. Do you get any input from any of the other cast on your books? You know, I don't even think they read them. That's the strangest thing. You know, life is strange in that way. My mother picked up the first one, and she said, this is the kind of thing I've always tried to avoid. <laughs> wow. I mean, and I, and I say, people say, what do you write? I say, I, I write vampire books. They go, oh, really? <laughs> I've never read anything like that. And I say, you probably never will. <laughs> but, wow. you know, at least the Dark Shadows fans, right. you know, they want to read them. They can't wait to read the next one. Well, you know, there's, there's always been that question uh, about if there's going to be another Dark Shadows movie. And, mm-hmm. you know, of course, we probably don't think Tim Burton's going to do another one. I guess it didn't do all that well. Uh, but... You know, it didn't do badly. It made money, especially overseas. Mm-hmm. It was number one for several weeks in France. And even though the fans screamed and hollered and didn't like it, I guess, uh, lots of people loved it. Yeah, and then, of course, they're always going to see it, too. I mean, out of curiosity, so it's always a curiosity. But what I want to know is, would you ever... Okay, let's say that, that you got, like, so filthy rich off this book, because we want everybody to buy it, <laughs> and, and you could make the next Dark Shadows movie, if you got a chance to get the rights, would you do it? I mean, would you want to do that? You mean have my book made into a movie? Yeah. Or be in a movie? No, have your book be made into a movie. Oh, well, that would be a dream come true. I think that Seth Graham Smith, though, read The Salem Branch because several of the things in that book he uh, he put in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I had I had a bunch of scenes with the hippies living in the woods, smoking dope. And so, I mean, Seth Graham Smith, his name is, who wrote the screenplay to Johnny Depp's Dark Shadows. Right. And... Um, and then you know he turned uh, Julia into a vampire, and uh, he uh, he did several things that looked very much like he had read my book. But I don't know. I mean, no one's come to me. It's a great big world, the publishing world, the film world. They're all they're all huge, and things that work work. You know, they're fluky. It's you know somebody who knows somebody. Um, I'm just happy doing what I'm doing, and I, you know, I just hope I can keep the fans happy. I hope they don't get too mad at me well, over my new stories. Oh, I doubt that, and especially since, like, like you said, it's pretty true to the original. You know, I wanna, I wanna pay homage to you because you did something that made me respect you more than I ever had before, and that is when I was at the uh, the last Dark Shadows convention or festival, as you guys call them, that I was at. You played Angelique with a group of fans called the Collinsport Players, I believe their name is. Yeah, yeah. That was so sweet of you. I mean, here you are. Are you kidding? <laughs> I love those guys. Wow. I, you know, I was I wandered in. I guess it must have been ten or twelve years ago, and they were doing uh, a takeoff of some TV show, and they were hysterical, and I thought. I want to act with these guys. <laughs> so I went up to the stage and I said, how come I'm never in any of your plays? Oh, and my said, God. We'll, we'll put you in. We'll put you in. So the next year, they called me up and sent me the script, insisted that I show up and rehearse. <laughs> and I did I did about five years of Collins Port Players. Man. It, I'll tell you why, why I stopped. In the last one, they had me singing and dancing. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't sing and I can't dance. And I was so embarrassed when it was over that I just said, okay, that's, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> but we, you know, we often perform. We know at the conventions, we often do some kind of little. Jerry Lacey and I did a sk- skit that he wrote. And, and uh, we've, you know, we've, Jim Pearson usually tries to put us up there doing something silly. And we, 
you know, it's the best audience in the world. You right. can't you can't get out in front of the Dark Shadows fans and do anything wrong. They just absolutely. I mean, if, if I wiggle my little finger, they all laugh. Standing exactly. I mean, it's just. An actor dreams they'll get an audience like this someday. You're so in a you're in a position, okay, as an actress, I'm sure you've done stage work too, where you don't know if you're gonna get booed or not. You're not gonna get booed at yeah. a Dark Shadows convention. That's right. Seriously. That's right. You, you yeah, are it's wonderful. You it's are wonderful. You are feeling the power that Angelique must have felt <laughs> when <laughs> because wow. Like you said, wiggle your finger and they'll jump. It's true. Yeah, they always ask me to laugh, will you do your laugh? And I always pretend like, Well, I you know, I really can't do it anymore. <laughs> I have to, you know, I have to pass on that one, you know. Or maybe if you paid me, I'd be, you know, and then I just start laughing. You know, oh, they just love it. Which, which, by the way, sounds like what? 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 What does your laugh sound like? I forgot. So you have to do it <laughs> like that. Okay. <laughs> wow. Just like so, that. So, are you already working on your next book? I mean, I don't know. Like, I like, am. I am. I have a contract. And uh, maybe, you know, talk to me in two years. <laughs> I don't know. It's going to be about Victoria Winters. Oh, yeah, boy. That, so really... I think it's time to tell her story. Absolutely. And she's going to she's gonna be, she's going to come back from the past. The last time we saw her, she went back to marry Peter Bradford in the past. That was so Alexander Mulkey could get off the show. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to bring her back to the present. And, you know, she's going to have a little bit more gumption and, and uh, energy, and uh, she's going to get caught up in a big mystery, and uh, we're going to find out her background and her story and what her childhood was like and whose daughter she really is. So it's going to be, I think, a little easier to write than Wolf Moon Rising, which was just a little bit too hard for me to write. It was too many storylines, but... There's always been that rumor about who da- whose daughter Victoria was. It, it really is Elizabeth's daughter, isn't it? I mean, they never That's really said. Right. Yeah. That's the rumor. That's yeah. the rumor. Right. What do you think? What do I think? Yeah. Well, you just have to read the book. One, two. <laughs> <laughs> so what about, I was going to say books on tape. No, I'm really looking forward to writing it because yeah. there's a lot of good material about Vicky. And, you know, she's actually the real heroine. She's the one... Of course. It was through her eyes that everyone saw the show for a long, long time. Yeah. So she was like you sitting at home. And, you know, she was always saying, I don't understand. <laughs> but, uh, so I'm going to make her, I think I'm going to make her a TV reporter. Mm-hmm. You and know something? Gonna, I'm sitting here. start out standing in a hurricane or something. <laughs> that, no, that would be fun. I'm sitting here listening to your voice. My God, you sound like you did back in the sixties. You haven't lost anything. Really? No, I'm oh, serious. You. you are so well spoken, and and you sound so well. And I can't believe you're from Memphis because you don't have an accent at all. Oh well, just take me back to Memphis, and back it comes. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I talk to someone from Memphis, it's like I just sound just as southern as anyone. Else. But I, you know, it's like everything else. When you want to be an actress and you want to do Shakespeare and Shaw and yeah. check off, you you can't have a southern accent. You have to get rid of it. Oh, I know what I've got to ask you. It just popped in my head. I don't want to like hold you too long because I know you're busy. But I've got to ask you this. Everybody was all hyped up, and they were all like, "Oh, well, the the movies are going to come out on DVD, and it's going to be great. And it's going to be a restored version." Uh, Night of Dark Shadows, your film, and everybody thought the DVD was going to have restored footage, and it didn't. Any comments? I'm so sorry about that because yeah. the people who worked on it, especially Darren Gross, they they were very disappointed. Uh, I don't know why the restored footage was not put in, but I think the movie with the restored footage will be shown at a convention. Cool. I don't know. I don't know that for sure. But they had a lot of problems with it because some of the scenes had lost. They'd lost the sound. Right. And they had to be redubbed, and some of them involved Grayson, and she's gone. Mm-hmm. So they had to find someone who would dub her lines, who could sound like her. They had difficult, but the thing is, that movie doesn't make sense without that restored footage. Mm-hmm. Once you get those scenes in there, the movie makes a lot more sense. It's just as good as the first one. MGM made Dan Curtis cut it down. They said it was too long, and they sort of ruined it. Uh, it, you know, it didn't have the success of the first one. But that one was really fun to do. I had a great time doing that. So. 
And do we have to wait, or can you give us a hint? I mean, as far as the, the footage is missing, I mean, what key elements? I don't are... know. You know, I don't know. I, I'm not. They don't tell me these things. Okay. Jim Pearson is the one that knows that. Did you say you had him on the show? Oh yeah, Jim and I go yeah. way back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, he have him back because he'll tell you. You know, he'll hem and haw, but maybe he'll tell you. They're they're trying very hard to get it out there. You know, it was very very disappointing. When they released it, I guess in the wake of Johnny Depp's film, they wanted to get it released, and they didn't put the footage in. They didn't cut it in. Wow. I don't want to disrespect you, but seriously, you in that little white negligee outfit <laughs> in <laughs> Night of Dark Shadows, that, that, that's what made me grow up to who I am. I, it just it made my <laughs> childhood for me. I hate to say I'm, I'm embarrassing myself right now, but man. I'm embarrassed for you. <laughs> 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 no. If you knew how I grew to hate that dress, sitting around in it all day long. Really? Every day. <laughs> wow, it looked it looked very comfortable. I don't know, maybe it was <laughs> <laughs> It was comfortable, yes. Now you, you, you know, have, it got you, dirty and uh, <laughs> You have a you have a daughter, right? I do. Her name is Katie and she's now she lives in Hudson, New York. And she's a designer and wow. a chef. Yeah. Katie Gee. and she's uh She's um, she's my heart's love. I just I wish she were still here. She's moved up to New, upper state, upstate New York. Wow. And uh, and I have two sons. One is a record producer, Rick Parker. He's a uh, he's got a website, Rick Parker Productions, and he has done just tons of albums and and uh, commercials. And he has lots of. Uh, reels of different kinds of music that he's composed. And my other son is a contractor, Andy. He's just like my husband is a contractor. My husband is not Jimmy Hawkins, the actor. <laughs> is that As a they rumor? They say on IDVB or whatever. Oh, wow. He's, he, he's he's a contractor. Yeah. So they get they've got that wrong. Everything on the web is not true. Really? Because I was told it was. Come to find out. <laughs> Were wow. you? So, so what well. about, I don't know about like, if I almost said books on tape. There's no books on tape. There's no tapes anymore. Are you going to put your book on, on maybe a CD and are you going to be or doing. Audio, or audio. Or audio download. Uh, download or whatever. Are you going to be doing any more of the uh, uh, Dark Shadows audio dramas that you've done? I will be doing more audio dramas. Audible, you know, books mm-hmm. on CD have have said that they want to record the books, but that's the last I've heard. Oh, fantastic. And I said, well, can I read them? I wrote them. Right. And they said, we have to audition. So I'm what? waiting for my audition. Are you serious? Holy cow, are they crazy? Well, you know, everything, this is the thing people don't realize. I'm sure reading a book is a craft in itself. I'm sure it's very difficult. I'm sure it's uh, it takes a certain knack and a certain amount of experience, and you know you have to be able to do all those accents and different. I mean, I have a feeling they'll let me do it, but I'm waiting to hear, waiting to hear. Well, I, I would love if they came out on Audible. I don't I think the Collins. I don't think the Collins Port players are going to ask you to audition. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, listen to you. I mean, no, they didn't ask me to audition. Wow. A lot of them have stopped coming to the conventions. I mean, you're so well spoken. You sound like you could have been in radio for like 40 years. I mean, seriously, that, that's crazy. Uh, well, thank you. you. You know what's you know what's bad. Let me tell you what's bad. I'll tell you what I think it is, and and that is because Dark Shadows was so long ago, and we had hoped that the movie was going to put it more pe- in people's minds. But Dark Shadows was so long ago. I just don't think they get it. I don't think they understand what a following you have and what people think of the remaining cast still alive. And so I just don't think they understand it because they're a new generation. You know, these people that run Who's things. They? Yeah. Well, the, Who are you the, talking about? The they? suits, the people well, in suits. People, like at Audible. Oh, the and, suits. Yeah. Oh, yeah. the people who in production. Yes. yes. Well, who knows? I mean, they come out with remakes of everything in the world every day. Yeah. Dark Shadows has, has been remade in film form three times. Yes. It's had two pilots. It's had dozens of books. I mean, it's the only... You know, Chiller Magazine came out last week with the uh, 10 greatest horror TV shows. And Dark Shadows was number two. Mm-hmm. So it's still well known that... that uh, 
among the fans and among the followers of the show. It's just, um, and it keeps creeping back up. Listen, I can't believe it. I can't believe we still have conventions. I can't believe I'm still writing books. Um, I just think it's it's it has a life of its own. It's it's immortal. Right. <laughs> it's like a vampire. <laughs> you can't think of anything without thinking of Dark Shadows. I mean, even uh, last week we lost Karen Black and Trilogy of Terror, which was done by Dan Curtis. You know? Yes, I mean, isn't that wonderful? Yes. Oh, I love that. Wow. Well, yeah. I better let you go because I hear what is either a dog or a wolf. <laughs> so I. Don't <laughs> You heard a dog? I heard a dog. I, yeah, I heard Barking. a dog. Do you have a dog? Yes. Well, that's who I heard. <laughs> uh, before we before we go, though, I want to give you a chance, Laura, to, to tell everybody listening again uh, where the debut is going to be and uh, where they can go to. I, I'm assuming you're going to be signing and all that kind of stuff. So let everybody know the details. Okay. Um, I'm going to be at um, Barnes & Noble at the Grove. Tuesday night, that's August the 20th, 7 o'clock, and that's in Los Angeles. And then Wednesday night, the 21st, I'll be at Mysterious Galaxy in San Diego, mm. also at 7 o'clock. Is, is that, then, uh, Laura, is that like a bookstore, or what is Mysterious it's Galaxy? It's a beautiful bookstore, mm. Mysterious Galaxy. It's on Claremont Mesa Boulevard. And then uh, Friday, August the 23rd, I'll be at Borderlands Books in San Francisco. And uh, I don't know whether you... Do you move... Should I keep going or... Keep going. Yeah, go ahead. Promote all keep you going. want. Okay. <laughs> um, then August the 25th, which is a Sunday, I'll be at Barnes & Noble uh, in Tigard, Tigard, Oregon, which is Portland, right outside of Portland. There, Bar- Barnes & Noble in Tigard. And then I'm going to Dragon Con. Ooh. Which is in uh, Atlanta. Nice. I'll be there from August 30th to September the 1st, and I'm going to be on five different panels. Wow! One of them, the best one, is about witches and incorporating witchcraft into your books. <laughs> you know, seriously, I think you could have had another career if you would have studied law. You could have defended witchcraft. Of course, you'd have had to have been back. back the, if, but she yeah. knows how to time travel. You know how to do that too. I mean, <laughs> you could have been like the greatest defense attorney for for witches. Seriously. <laughs> Oh, well, maybe it's not too late. <laughs> <laughs> now, i got to know, too, uh, is there any more Dark Shadows festivals coming up? Uh, I don't know if they're planning any now. Or yes, any- they're planning enough. Well, <laughs> the festival this um, year is actually a cruise, and you can find it online. It, takes, it starts October the 27th, and the boat, cruise boat leaves uh, from New Jersey and goes to Bermuda and back. And that's still open if anybody wants it. And Catherine and I and Marie Wallace will be on board. Yeah, but witches can't travel over water. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I guess I'm just going to have to uh, cast a spell and uh, <laughs> make a magic carpet for myself. <laughs> don't you hate it when people get corny with you like that? <laughs> I don't hate it at all. <laughs> yeah, did you hear the Southern? Yeah, I did. I don't, I did. Hate, it. I don't hate it at all. <laughs> Well, I, um, I'll tell you, I, I think I think you're wonderful. My God, I okay, I'm an original Dark Shadows fan. I'm, yeah. I'm 56. I grew up watching the show. In fact, I, I flunked out of school because of the show, because where they <laughs> showed it in my area, I had to stay home from school to be able to see it because I went to school on the other side of town. And it was worth it. It was worth it. You loved it that much, huh? I'm, oh, not, wow. I'm not too smart, but damn it, I saw, <laughs> I saw Dark Shadows. <laughs> well... I, you know, I'm always happy to meet someone who's a loyal fan. It, it, it amazes me. It amazes me, and I'm, I never stop being amazed. Well, that's that's good. What about you on the web? Where can we find you? Your blogs, your website, and all that. Just LaraParker.com. You'll find me. There's about. Sometimes it's the top. Sometimes it's two or three down. It just says blogspot. And uh, of course, I have a page. My real name is Lamar Ricky Hawkins. Yeah, and I have a something? Facebook page, and I have a Laura Parker page. You know, I just, here I've known you like how many years, and I just now found that out in the press release, and, and I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm on Facebook a lot trying to push these uh, appearances. Yeah. And people can write to me, and uh, I usually write them back. If they write to me on my Facebook page, on Laura Parker page, mm-hmm. there are not so many that I don't write them back or write them back. Fantastic. So, um, so how did you come up with your stage name then? Oh, my, uh, my, uh, the agent that signed me in New York just 
Well, my married name is Parker. You know, my son's names are Rick Parker and Andy mm-hmm. Parker. So my married name is Parker, and then uh, they just thought, I think they got Laura out of Dr. Zhivago or something. Oh, okay, well, perfect. <laughs> That's how it goes, you know. We're going to give you another name. And I was too young and too inexperienced to fight them with it. I said, oh, okay, whatever you say. <laughs> to, to sum up your whole career, I mean, how how happy are you with the way things have been? I'm not sure if it was you or Catherine. I believe it was you. Didn't I see or, or hear you say one time that you had dreamt that when you went to Hollywood, you would become like a multi-billionaire and, and, and just Big movie cool. star, right. Yeah, and it didn't quite happen. Oh, I thought it was going to happen. I thought for sure it was going to happen. And you were a little disappointed. I didn't see how it could not happen. Yeah. I mean, I thought I was absolutely movie star quality, and I was going to have a wonderful long career, and I'll, I would never think about Dark Shadows again. And then I, I realized after 20 long years of doing small roles in episodic TV in a movie or two that Dark Shadows was the best role I ever got. So I've really learned to appreciate it. I mean, not very many people have the following that that show has. Not anymore. You look at what Hollywood stars are doing now. Is there anything that they're really tied with that you're known so recognizably for? I mean, they don't have that nowadays. Well, it's it's a kind of a rare situation because I'm not so famous that I can't mingle with fans and go out in the world and and talk to them and you know like at these book signings and see them and and uh but i'm famous enough that i have a certain you know people buy my books so yeah. it's it's actually the best place to be yeah best well, of both worlds well do me a favor and if you go back up and see johnny carlin again uh please tell him that terry and tiffany of cult radio love him so much please get terry well. and tiffany i will yeah I will. I'm going to go see him next week. Fantastic. Okay. Well, we encourage all of our listeners to head over to lauraparker.com and also try to make it out to one of her upcoming appearances. Laura, as always, it's such a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for coming on the show tonight. Thank you so much, Tiffany. Thank you, Terry. I loved it. Uh, all right. Okay. Well, you have a wonderful weekend, and thank you, okay? Okay, you too. Right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.